Welcome, call to order the Monday, August 12th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, being recorded by ECMI. Uh, first on our agenda this evening, we have Environmental Design Review and Public Hearing, reopening special permit number 3348. Uh, this is an application by Gary McCoy of Point Signs for CVS at 833 Mass Ave. So if a proponent could come up and walk us through your uh, request, please. Certainly, folks have drawings, but the store is literally across the street. I'll just pass out this one cover page from my book, and I have some other documents if needed. But basically, there are two uh, sets of internally lit channel letters on the building currently, with the uh, the old CVS logo. I'm sure most of you have probably seen the new logo that's been introduced on a bunch of stores. Um, where they re remove the uh, the slash between the CVS and the pharmacy, and they have the heart icon now as their uh, their new branding element. <coughs> so the proposal is to um, remove the two existing signs that are currently on the building. Um, they are 33.41 square feet each, and we're proposing to replace them with the new logo which is 33.08 square feet, a little bit smaller. Um, same color, same type of lighting. Uh, really pretty straightforward change. Um, we'll be paint, you know, repainting the facade as well, cleaning up the whole store. But pretty much like for like, uh, change out of the signage. Before we go any further and get into board discussion, we are absent one board member tonight. So if we do proceed to a vote this evening, we need to have a unanimous vote for the board. <coughs> so that being said, you can continue on here. We can ask questions and make recommendations, or you can ask us to continue the hearing to another date. But we have all five people here. Can I poll the board? <laughs> uh, Why don't you continue? Let's, with let's continue. And see where things see go. Where the are. Yeah. Oh, let me just tell Actually, the, the reason for this application to be before the board is because they're increasing the number of signs on the property mm -hmm. um, compared to what was there. What was previously approved, maybe you've <laughs> maybe you've added signage, but it has not been approved. So the for the from the prior permit, so this is an increase of signage. Uh, actually, so can you clarify that a little bit more for me? Sure. Because what's existing on the building now, you're saying is not permitted? No, no. On the overall signage plan. So including the parking lot and the building together, you're increasing the total number of signs that were prior that were previously approved in the permit. Can you identify which signs those are? Um, it's the do not enter sign. Yeah. Yeah. One. I don't know what number that is on the sign plan. Sorry. Number five. Looks like number five. Sign five. The do not enter sign? Yeah. Well, it's a public Safety sign. I don't no. even, they wouldn't even think they have. No, I'm just, um, I'm just yeah. clarifying the reason okay. for it being before the board, but that was that was my only point. Yeah. Well, if the board feels we don't need to have a do not enter, I take that out of the package. We don't have a problem doing that. Yeah. We'll, we'll go to questions from the board, and I'll begin with Rachel. Uh, I think you actually in your presentation answered the questions I had about repairing and repainting the existing fascia and um, the current uh, way that the signs are, are currently lit. And these will be individual letters, not on a race way? Yes, ma'am. I have no questions. Ken. Um, do you represent CVS or do you represent the owner? I represent the sign company and CVS Pharmacy. I do all of the sign work for CVS Pharmacy in the northern, northern part of the United States. And I've done so since 2005. Is anyone here from CBS on the ownership? No, sir. I'm going to stick myself up on the limb here, okay? I'm not sure am I in the right to do this or not, but I'm going to. Uh, this was a special permit that was opened a while ago, and the CBS was allowed to do all its work with in conjunction with certain promises to the house next door. The house next door is boarded up. It's drug ridden, it's vandals. Uh, I don't even think CBS feels like it's safe there for the drive through because all the kids hang out in the back there. I want the owner to come up and 
give us an explanation of what he's going to do. It's been, I don't know, when was this approved? It's been 10 years since he's got approval for the whole project. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hold you hostage or anything else, but I'm feeling that there's no other choice right now. So I'm feeling strongly that I'm not going to uh, approve this right now. I would ask for a continuance for the ownership to come up and address issues that are before us right now. So can you be, I'm not aware of what you're bringing up, so I understand why just, you're saying what you're saying? Just walk next door. So, but yeah. for me, I, but I can't go to the CVS and say, just go walk next door. I'd like to have maybe some specific things that um, you're referring to that I can address specifically, rather than just say, you're not happy with the house next door. The building next door has been, uh, been abandoned for the last 10 years since uh, approval of the permit. It's been boarded up because the windows have been broken. Uh, numerous times, the police have been in there to get rid of uh, uh, drug users, vandals, kids. There's raccoons, um, livestock living in there. Okay, I'm, I just don't want to go on like that on Mass Ave in Arlington. So, are they obligated to do something with that building when they yes. had this? What were they obligated to do? I don't have that approval. I'm going to ask for that approval. Table, there are certain conditions as far as the defense and upkeep. Mm -hmm. Not only the land around the property, but the property itself that hasn't been done as, as, as described, realizing that you don't have any actual control or authority over that. I think what he's seeking is uh, a meeting with the owner before we move forward here. Mm -hmm. just, just to reopen the special plan, discuss anything with the special plan, not just the sign that you So I think that's what, uh, what Ken is looking for. <coughs> Correct. Okay. And not in personal. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I get it. I had, this is completely unknown to me. I had no idea. And so I wish I knew ahead of time. We written letters. Yeah. Uh, we well, I wish as, an app, as the applicant, I wish you could have got somebody could have sent me a notice, and maybe I could have taken care of some of this ahead of time. But that's fine. We'll go back to them. Yeah. Okay. I think we could. What we could do is continue and have uh, yeah. you know, on the next meeting, which is September ninth. September ninth. You will be able to okay. Talk to. You may want to talk with CVS and see if they can uh, have discussion with the landlord. Okay, so let's uh, request a continuance to seven to September 9th. My motion to um, continue this hearing until uh, next September 9th meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I, I don't have the permission. September 9th. September 9th at 7:30. Okay. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Is this a public hearing? Uh, it is. Are you taking public comment? Uh, we are continuing this hearing to the ninth, but I will take public comments. Yes, Mr. Lurie. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Just a couple. Um, one a question for this gentleman. I, I understand the, you know, they're going to be replacing the signs with some type of L internally illuminated LED fixture. Is that right? Yeah. Currently, they're currently they're uh, neon tubes in those signs, and we would change it to uh, LED. Will the LEDs be on all the time? Be this same as what they're on now, which is I don't know. Usually they close an hour after open after closing, so they're not on all night or they're not on during the day. No, okay. uh, fine. Um, just one request for the board, Mr. Chairman. In addition, if you're going to be opening up the um, special permit to other concerns, one of the things that has gone by the wayside at that property over time is the landscaping, and I would ask that the board revisit the landscaping plan and that the developer agree to, because I think you'll find. And that it's not being maintained at all. And I would hope that you could bring that back up to <coughs> what it was at the time the board approved the special permit a decade or so ago. So thank you. Thank you. Can I get can I get your name again? Yeah, it's uh, Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. I was on the redevelopment board at the time the special permit, the original special permit was uh, approved. Thank you. Do you have any other comments or concerns from members of the public? I've seen none. We have a motion pending. Uh, second. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. See you on the 9th. Thank you. Well, we'll continue that to the 9th. <coughs> uh, if you're not able to make it, you can make arrangements with the department. And so we have another EDR review scheduled for 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll deal with other business. Yeah. So um, <coughs> I'm going to 
to jump ahead. I know we have the components here, but since it was advertised for 8 o'clock, I'm going to hold it as close to 8 o'clock as I can. Just procedural just, uh, matters there. So third on our agenda this evening is a request for a public hearing continuance and waiver of special permit filing fee. Um, I would like to continue that to another meeting pending some questions I have uh, regarding our authority to actually be able to waive that permit. Uh, I'd like to continue that at least to September 9th, if not further out. Uh, Can I add one more thing to that? Yes, please. Um, and I, I also like to know exactly what fees we're waiving, the total amount, not just what fees. Mm -hmm. This amount, this amount, this amount. So you know the total number of, uh, you know, is it $500, is it $1,000? I'd like to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in the second dimension. I think that is the outlines. I'm, I'm that. wondering whether there are other. But that's for the. We're um, only talking about the special permit filing. Oh, that's it. Okay. So, so nothing to do with the permit, uh, the building permit. The building the permit doesn't fall under the redevelopment board. We're only talking about the special permit filing. Okay. Okay. So that's the total amount. Which the board does have the authority to wish to. Okay. Okay. I think there are some questions out there, and I know. Uh, our fifth member has some questions and concerns about that as well. So I would take a motion to continue that for further discussion to at least September 9th, if not further. I'll also note that there's a letter uh, from the proponent of that particular project asking us to continue uh, their vote hearing to October 21st. That makes sense to have those two things on the same date. So motion to which date? October 21st. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then we have to move the, we have a request to move the 1211-1207 Massachusetts Ave uh, public hearing to October 21st. So I'll take a motion on that. Continue. To continue that. Yeah. So motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. All right. Well, that took care of that. So as long as nobody has any objections, I will move to the next uh, and only remaining agenda item. Let's see if I can pull this over. Well, we'd still be talking when we have some less people in the day, but still join to the door. Do we have all the parties here who wish to speak? on food link? There may be one other person coming, but <coughs> she may be fine. Are, are all the presenters on? The presenters yes. are here. Why don't you come up, take your time setting up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to move so quickly. Usually it's the opposite. They will be presenting the screen. Oh. Okay. Public hearing for a special permit 3604 by Deanne Dupont for Food Link Inc. at 108 Summer Street in Arlington. Hearing is now open. Hi, I'm Julie Kramer, co founder, Deanne Dupont, co founder of Food Link. We have Carl Salander and Peter Zambaletti of Reverse Architecture. 
So Food Link is a food rescue organization started in Arlington in 2012. We collect over 1,600 pounds of food every day, seven days a week, from Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Wegmans, and other local grocers and bakers. The fruits, vegetables, dairy, meats, prepared foods, and bread we collect are carefully sorted and then distributed to 38 organizations serving people who are food insecure. Arlington programs receive over 50% of the food distributed by Food Link. And this includes the Arlington Boys and Girls Club, Fidelity House, Arlington Eats, Arlington Eats Market, Arlington Youth Counseling Center, Chestnut Manor, Cusack Terrace, Drake Village, Monotony Manor, Neat, American Legion Post 39, Elliott Community Services Young Adult Vocational Program, Wayside Youth and Family Steps Program, and Caritas Communities, as well as Arlington Senior Center. The remainder of the food benefits people in 16 nearby communities, such as Medford, Winchester, and Lawrence. Foodlink has a staff of four full-time employees and is powered by dedicated volunteers who mainly come from Arlington. The fresh food we distribute is enough to prepare over 400,000 nutritious meals per year. This high-quality food that would otherwise have gone into the waste stream. Part of our sustainability work includes educating others about food code dates. Any food that is not fit for humans is first donated to farm animals and wildlife rehabilitation, and second, it's composted. All the packaging that can be recycled is recycled, so Foodlink is just about a zero waste facility. Foodlink is providing healthy people, uh, excuse me, healthy food to people of all ages and abilities, where they live, congregate, learn, and play, thus removing the accessibility barrier to nutritious food. Carl Salander, I'm the architect uh, for this design. I've um, been working with Foodlink uh, since they acquired this property uh, several months ago. Uh, the address is 108 Summer Street, uh, so just around the corner, that's uh, Mill Street, um, Summer Street here. Oops. And the bikeway. So the building is this little black smudge here. It uh, backs up onto the bikeway on one side, Summer Street uh, on the other. Plot plan. You can see uh, that's the building there. There's a um, parking lot of the, uh, the east side. This is upside down. Uh, and um, the west side, um, this long uh, skinny lot, it's kind of a shape of a, a, a speeder with a bar to hit. Um, so it's a bit of a challenging site uh, in a lot of regards. Um, that's what the building uh, looks like now. Um, you're probably familiar with it just being that bottom part store. Um, and uh, you can see from the bike right in the back. It's basically a concrete box with stucco. Um, very simple industrial building. Um, existing plan, uh, sorry. existing plans, but um, basically what we're doing is uh, um, so on the we're playing a uh, government invasion of the interior of the building with selective uh, exterior improvements. Uh, so what we're showing here on the um, second floor, this is the top level. Uh, we think we'll have office space in half the building, there's a stair floor with uh, here. Um, and at the basement level, we have mechanical space and a tenant space. The main level is Food Link's uh, main operations area. This is where the, um, the loading dock here on the west side is the uh, sort of addition to the building uh, in the sense that there is an outdoor loading dock there now. We just want to enclose it and enlarge it slightly so that um, they can comfortably uh, load and unload the food. Yes, yeah, so these are the uh, existing plans, uh, existing site plan. So they can comfortably load and unload food uh, in the winter here. Um, this is their kind of food sorting area. They have a three basin sink and a uh, space to kind of clean um, shipping containers and, uh, or containers the food comes in and sort the food, repackage it, uh, store it in a large cold storage area here. Um, and there's a conference room bathrooms. The other, uh, one of the other main exterior improvements is this uh, accessible uh, 
uh, ramp that we want to add on the east side. Um, this would make the first floor fully accessible um, and uh, as well uh, serve as a place where uh, food bank volunteers can uh, bring uh, boxes of food into the space. Um, the other main addition you can see here in plan is this canopy, which is this dash line that surrounds the building. Calling it a canopy is a, it's a hard roof. Um, on this side, it covers the area around the loading dock. Uh, on the street front, it, it, it forms a, a bit of a marquee that sort of uh, bulges out here in front of the bus stop, so we're providing some shelter for people waiting for a bus in front of the building. Uh, and then it covers the um, ramp. So this is the kind of main design feature on the exterior that we're adding to the building. Um, the site plans, if you guys can't read these, feel free to go through this the same material. Uh, the site plan, uh, on the west lot again, this is the loading dock side. Um, we are, uh, it's currently uh, asphalt and um, we're going to maintain this as an asphalt parking lot. However, this little area um, is a kind of raised terrace. We're going to uh, proposing a new retaining wall uh, with permeable paving here. Um, and a bike storage area, and then potentially a little uh, sitting area for the employees. So this is uh, added uh, permeable paving to the site and uh, kind of regrading here with the retaining wall. It's you know, it like five feet or so tall off the bikeway. Um, the east lot, uh, we are proposing adding another area of permeable pavers uh, where the parking spaces are. There are four parking spaces here. Go over a little bit of parking on the uh, next slide. Um, uh, in terms of uh, drainage, these large uh, roof areas we're adding, we're going to capture that water, uh, bring it into some downspouts, and feed it into two dry wells, which are uh, still in design. The idea is to do a 25 year storm uh, uh, holding chambers uh, so we'll be able to capture all the water that currently just falls on the asphalt and flows mostly to the back of the site and then plus these two uh, areas of permeable paving. I think overall we're going to be capturing an additional 1,800 square feet of surface area um, uh, kind of engineer to uh, re-inject the water into the site itself. Um, here's some details on the, one of the bike storage facilities. So this is our um, parking and transportation um, plan. So uh, we have uh, this uh, facility over here, which is this one holds uh, six uh, long-term storage um, spaces for uh, bicycles. There's actually six more up above, but we can't count those because they require you to raise the bike, which we can count in the zoning code. Um, and then we have four uh, short-term spaces right next to the building. Sorry. Um, on the west lot, these four spaces are all dedicated fueling spaces, and this will be primarily their operations loading and unloading. These two larger spaces are for their vans. Two smaller spaces would be uh, for employees or potentially volunteers dropping off. Um, all the parking spaces will be um, for a fee, and the employee parking will be for a fee, including uh, these two, which are dedicated for the uh, two tenant spaces in the building. This is a visitor space, this is a food bank space as well. Um, so we have eight total spaces on site. Uh, so we are asking for parking relief um, from a requirement of 15 under the zoning code. Um, in addition to that, um, there's a few uh, on-street um, parking areas here. Um, this is the uh, bus stop right in front of the building. Um, and if you can see this a little better, uh, we did a uh, parking study of uh, one week of Foodlink's current facility um, uh, to see how many vehicles were parked uh, on the property um, every hour. And uh, basically maxed out at like five or six on the weekend, but generally it's more like three or four, which is um, what we've designed this site to accommodate. Um, and FoodLink has secured uh, from the owner of this lot, which is where Scootray is, uh, weekend use of four additional spaces here, uh, which would uh, give them uh, plenty of parking to accommodate their, uh, their, their uh, traffic flow. Uh, and generally on the weekends is, is their uh, when they have the most vehicles because that's where most people are volunteering. Um, so in addition, just this, this kind of map showing our, all of our transportation assets here, we have the bike path obviously right behind the building, um, Summer Street with the bus stop right in front of the building. These are the other bus stops within a quarter mile radius, so there's uh, several bus lines available here, um, and, and the scooter lot, and um, the end I believe is negotiating 
uh, to try to get some additional potential overflow parking on this slide as well. Sorry, which one was that? This is the uh, fish. Wait, 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 the, the My Right Family owns it? Okay. Um, this is our study of uh, how vehicles will access the site. So uh, yeah. on this side, um, the east lot uh, will be mostly uh, passenger vehicles. Um, so the access much the same way as it is now. Um, uh, we have a 20, it's sort of tapering, but 22 to 24 foot, I think, width here, um, with uh, four full-size parking spaces. On this side, um, we want to be able to accommodate a uh, box truck up to a 40 foot length. Um, so the canopy's been designed so it's tall enough that uh, it can fit under. Um, through the study, we determined that trucks will approach from the east and then back into the lot, and then they'll have to continue going east because it's just not really possible for them to make that kind of turn in that direction. Um, and uh, this traffic study was uh, sort of hourly. Uh, or a log of all the trips that FoodLink uh, employees made um, during a one-week period. So uh, again, if you can see it, there's 25 uh, rows here. So on the busiest day, there were 25 trips made over a 13-hour period. So we're not talking about really high-intensity traffic use. This is two vehicles a day coming and going, or two vehicles an hour, sorry, coming and going at, at, at a, you know, the maximum uh, uh, traffic period during that week. Um, talk about the design of the exterior elements. Uh, this is the new uh, canopy you can see over here on the renderings as well. Uh, this is the Summer Street elevation. We're replacing all the windows with uh, new triple glazed um, uh, windows. Um, the facade will basically, uh, the existing stuff will be painted. Um, then we're adding this kind of band of uh, wood, uh, which is uh, across just underneath the edge of the canopy and on the underside of the canopy and at the eastern and western um, sides under the canopy. So there'll be this kind of feature of wood that you'll especially see as you come uh, from the east or west along Summer Street. Um, from the bikeway, you know, similar idea, we're doing this wood band all the way across the back. This also provides um, uh, us with the ability to insulate where the floor slab meets the um, exterior facade. We're trying to do a very sustainable um, design here. So uh, according to our projections, the building will use 80% less energy than a typical new building of this type, um, partially because of a very well insulated envelope design, which has to do with um, trying to reduce the thermal bridging where the concrete slab meets the concrete exterior wall uh, there, which can't really be mitigated from the interior. So we're using the cornice and the canopy to sort of um, conceal insulation. So we're doing double duty with those things. Um, from the east side, the new ramp um, under a roof here, and on the west side, the loading dock area um, uh, with the wood cladding around it. And the, this is the um, short term bike parking. Um, <coughs> this is the uh, underside of the roof uh, plan um, with, uh, you can see all the, the wood here. We do have some lighting. And we're proposing basically down lights in the canopy that would turn off at night. They'd be on motion sensors, so uh, if people come to make nighttime deliveries, they'll be safe. Um, the building section talking about some of those insulation elements. Um, new signage. Uh, the, the large food link sign has 18-inch uh, letters located uh, here near the bus stop um, towards the uh, east side of the building, along with this uh, food link's motto. Uh, below, these will both be um, painted uh, metal uh, letters that will be individually mounted to the facade. Um, then we have um, uh, the uh, building number, uh, three locations on this pier, on the door, and uh, on the um, new entry door on the um, east side. So again, just to uh, reiterate the existing condition of the building, and then what we're proposing again, um, these large canopy areas, new wood, uh, some, some lighting. You can see on the renderings we're proposing the lighting at the signage at the front door and underneath the canopy. And then the view from the um, bikeway is kind of, it's really mostly covered with trees. You can only get sort of glimpses of the building, which is why we're showing it that way. That's it. Okay. Thank you. So as I said to the other, uh, <coughs> the other applicant in the other hearing, 
we are down a member tonight, so if we do proceed to a vote, you might ask us for a continuance before that happens, uh, <coughs> as you would require a unanimous vote from the members of the board this evening. Uh, that being said, unless you wish to ask for a continuance right this second, I will uh, move to questions and comments from the board and then to public hearing. Uh, I think what you've done is great. I think it's really attractive use of an existing building. I think it provides a vital service to all of the food look provides a vital service to the Arlington community. Uh, I'm really impressed with what you've done. And it's thoughtful. I think the, the one thing that I'd like to see, and I won't necessarily I be promoting in favor of it, is a transportation demand management plan, particularly because you have volunteers coming in and, and to the site. And I know uh, I appreciate the fact that you've done a traffic study and you have uh, laid out all of the transportation alternatives. I'd just like to see that you encourage people coming to the site to use those alternative methods of transportation, which you might do to encourage that. We, we actually have uh, what we thought was a, a plan, um, which would include um, uh, providing a bike for employees. We have a, a shower, I forgot to mention, inside uh, for biking. Um, we have uh, more than the zoning requirements of bike parking spaces, so we're mm -hmm. encouraging the biking. Uh, and then paid uh, parking for employees um, for those spaces. Okay. And what do you envision, <coughs> you don't have to get too deep into it, uh, as far as the tenant spaces? Um, I mean, maybe the man can speak to that. Yeah, um, we don't have any tenant who's said that they want the space. Um, there's a preference for a like-minded organization. So if it could be some an organization that is serves the public, not the public, but provides a service to the public. We will not have an like, individual service there. Um, and who's also into sustain, uh, some sort of sustainability. But that's our preference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Ken. Um, these canopies at each end, mm -hmm. are they lit underneath? Uh, they'll have recess lighting uh, yeah, underneath. So they're just normal operational hours, right? Not. Yeah, we would have them on a, a motion sensor, I think, um, for security and you know for any nighttime drop offs. Do we uh, do we have a lighting plan with your submission? Um, yeah, it's on the roof, on the roof plan. Okay. What? Down here from the bottom, can't be reflected. Oh, okay. Sorry, all those little dots are the recess lights. And then we have, I don't know if you can see on this plan, but there are a couple of linear lights associated with a sign, like this one, and one over the door. What's that? I went over there this, I think, either, I don't know, forget what, I went over last week. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that uh, the trees from the bike path are fairly tall. They're like maybe 12, 15 feet above the roof of this existing building right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. I just yeah, yeah. Okay. That seems about right. Um, how do you plan to uh, use it with the solar panels you got up there? Um, Which are only? So uh, no, I mean, we've so, done a study. So, so we want to talk to the, the tree arborists for the town and they said we should um, actually cut some back away from the building and then the solar company um, was amazed at what percentage we are able to get it's, it's well above the normal percentage so, so the town's okay with you guys cutting trees no not cutting trees trim. we apparently trim. we have the right to trim trees away from our building mm -hmm. that's my understanding this is from the arborist I'm just that, I mean, I'm just telling you what I, okay. I have heard that that if it's like in, like hitting our building and stuff such like that, then we're allowed to trim. The, the solar company did a um, you know they have their device where they calculate the angles and stuff. And yeah. They didn't. They thought it was uh, the trees are are most the tallest ones are at this end of the building. Along the back back of the bike path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and there's one tree that's sort of leaning way over there. I don't yeah, know yeah, what's yeah. what's gonna happen <laughs> there, but the, the other but it's one big tree there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just concerned that you're not gonna say we're putting solar panels here, we got a proof of solar panels and all of a sudden we see this like mm -hmm. staging and 
and things like that's way up in the air. That's no, just, no, no, they no, collect no, sun no. because no, no, no. you come back and say the trees no, block no, the, the panel. So, roof so they're, they're just low on the roof. They're low on the yeah. roof. Yeah, yeah they, they don't protect yeah. more okay. than a foot and a half, I think. All right, so that's what we're going to yeah. approve. Mm -hmm. Low and uh, pretty much flat to the roof. Yeah, it's a ballasted and install. They, they sort of sit on a little rack yeah. and wait mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll work with the arborist, the town arborist, to mm -hmm. trim back some of the trees. So Exactly. It's, They've it's been contacted once, but I mean, that's you know preliminary. But they just don't want to cut like half of it off and nothing that dies because it leads way over the other yeah. side, that's all. Uh, all right. Um, you have, are you guys planning to use the two lower windows as your egress for the basement uh, units? Uh, it's egressing onto the bike path? No. <coughs> so they're just bigger windows you put in there for the sake of bigger windows? Daylight. Yeah. It's only the one so side of the building that has windows. Yeah, there's no daylight basement. in the front. Okay. No, I'm just, yeah. I'm just asking, is that going to be some sort of in ingress uh, or... Uh, we have discussed that with the MBTA and they're not uh, amenable to that, so... Okay, it's so, that, so that has been talked about. Okay. <laughs> it's been discussed. <laughs> Alright, so that yeah. is just pure windows then, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I wasn't sure. It looked like a door to me when I looked at it, and I was yeah. like, well, what's happening there, you know? <laughs> So the T's not amenable to creating another connection down to the bike path? No. Not, not at least this not. Time. Not uh, at yeah. this time, but we, we uh, have been in discussions with them, um, but at this point they're not. It doesn't mean that they won't be, because you know, we're still trying, but we have to proceed, because we can't wait a year, uh, <laughs> we have to proceed with the assumption that we don't have access there. We wanted to try to make an accessible entrance from the bike path to the lower level of the building. That's what I thought you had there. Yeah. But okay. No, it's so kind it's of residual, not. probably from that desire. <laughs> and we thought, well, yeah, yeah so we can get more light. Too bad that they want yeah. to do that. Okay. <coughs> and then, can I ask you? You have the, the loading dock clad in this uh, nice wood mm -hmm. siding, right? That's a loading dock. Yeah. No. Uh, any thought of maybe? We're taking some of that money and, and materials and putting it toward the front entrance, facing the street that's a little, do a little more to it than this we have right now. I'm not yeah. trying to tell you to spend more money. Yeah, yeah. I know your money is, is limited, and yeah, but I just wonder if you put some of that. Reallocate. Yes, there you go, thank you. I have the same question. Uh, just put it off the loading dock. Just right. put it near the front door, <laughs> you know. Um, well, I, I, two things to that. Uh, Probably will um, need to put a little bit more of a durable material, at least on the lower area of this. Um, so we want mostly wood on there, but that's the concept. Um, uh, Can I ask a corollary question about in terms of your visitors? Will they be using the front door primarily, or are you trying to drive them to the accessible entrance there? The way that the plan was, it looked like the reception was oriented so towards the front to, door. To Ken's point that. This is the old plan, but that you would be driving people in the Summer Street facing facade. Um, yeah, the accessible entrance is more for volunteers who would be, you know, driving up in their mm -hmm. car and loading a couple of boxes of food onto a cart. But most people, you're going to have. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that there's a ton of just walk-in visitors mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, that that would be one of the main uh, facades. I mean, you don't really have. Um, you know, we're right on the sidewalk here, so we mm -hmm. can't really add cladding. I realize, <laughs> but it's, it's your front door to the public. Yeah, yeah. And and it, and another yeah. also reason not to put wood in the front is maintenance, because right now it's covered, and so it's lower maintenance because it's not going to be as exposed to the elements. Uh, one of our, our requirements, and we're talking to the CM and architect, is that it be a lower maintenance building so that the cost of operating is less going forward. If you put wood that's extremely exposed to the elements, that adds a, a level of cost for the future of food link. I, and, and I mean, the other point is that this is all a kind of glass uh, entrance, right? And inside here, there's going to be a wall um, where there'll be kind of graphics, uh, you know, food link um, signage and stuff inside, and potentially like a changing display of, the, of their activities. So I think that's sort of what we are hoping for the front door is to have inside that you can see through the window some some uh, kind of um, uh, let's say uh, 
rotating um, signage and stuff. It's not signage. Graphics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah, uh, sold me on that one day, okay? okay. Uh, I'm just saying the front door needs some work. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that, if, if that is your front door, mm -hmm. uh, it is what's facing the public, what everybody sees. I know you want to be so you say not have a clear door? You want a solid door there? Is that what I'm you're saying? I'm not saying what to do there. I'm just saying the, the, the look of it there right now is that it, it looks very plain and, and like it looks like a side door to me. It doesn't look mm -hmm. like a front door to the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 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 oh, I, I actually kind of, I kind of, I think get what they're trying to do here, which is, you know, the kind of the, the business of Food Link mm -hmm. is is the business going on at the loading dock, getting the food out to the people, and that's drawing the attention to that on purpose. Um, that's kind of how I interpreted it. Um, I and that is, that is the public face they wanted to show. Mm -hmm. um, There's something you want to drive people to walking over into the loading dock air area, which yeah. is, you know, if I'm looking at this facade, that's where you have the orange door and the wood and, um, you know, I think yeah. perhaps, you know, again, if you looked at, instead of having the wood on the loading dock side, perhaps it's a band below your ribbon of windows on the on the front facade. Um, you know, again, I would, I, I agree with Ken, I would suggest taking another look at what you're facing the residential spaces across the street with and perhaps just thinking about the allocation of, of those materials. Mm -hmm. and to, to his point again, not trying to drive cost, just so about future costs? It, it, I don't think, again, under the, the, the canopy is going to give you that much more protection from the, from the elements. It's still exposed to the elements. It's not, um, you know. I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I think, I mean, one thing that we discussed would be um, potentially having actual murals painted on the facade in the future. I mean, we're basically limited to paint. I, I, I'm not opposed to a graphic, yeah. you know, perhaps treatment mm -hmm. either. Um, <coughs> it just feels a little lonely. Mm -hmm. I mean, the material doesn't have to come to the ground. I mean, you've done a good job here, okay? So, mm -hmm. I, I have all the faith in you to come up with a nice uh, elaboration of the front a little bit more, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you're up to the challenge, <laughs> and you can do it. And I'm not asking you to spend more money. I'm saying maybe look at different materials, take some of it away from that surrounding a moving dock because it's it's not very durable either. I mean sure pallets are gonna be bumping into it and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. So if you just you know um, take a look at that a little bit more. You know, it's not a deal break here. I'm just saying the front it looks a little, you know Yeah. You can work on that. Yeah. 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 That's all I had to say. Yeah. Um, so I'm I, I like like the project, Food Link's a great organization, and this is clearly a big improvement over the old auto parts store. Um, uh, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that he is not on board with a connection to the bike path. Um, so I, and Summer Street, uh, unfortunately, is not particularly. Uh, bike friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I think as part of your TDM plan, um, uh, directing people on how to uh, how to most safely and comfortably ride into uh, into the new facility uh, from the bike path, mm -hmm. from the nearest connections, whether it's um, uh, down at Mill Street, or I think there's a connection uh, out of the bike path uh, further west on, yes. on Summer yeah, Street. Not too far on Summer Street. Yeah. West. Yeah. Um, so that's that's something I think you might want to formalize, and maybe you know, as part of as part of your TDM plan, give maybe to new volunteers, maybe give them a map of suggested ways of, of getting there. Uh, obviously, you've, you've thought very carefully about the bike parking um, required by the new bylaw, so I appreciate that. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, don't really have any specific comments about that. Uh, we even got covered short term 
bike parking, so that's that's a big plus. Um, with respect to the request for parking reduction, I, I appreciate um, the work you did on, on the parking study at, at your current location, and um, you know, I, I, I believe you understand um, the transportation needs of, of your business, and, uh, and I, I think um, I'm confident that, that the way you thought this through will work, but I, we want to make sure that, um, that we're following what the bylaw requires in, in granting the parking reduction. Um, so uh, if, um, if you are uh, intending to count off-site spaces, um, we need to make sure that there is a legally enforceable agreement in place for the use of those spaces. <coughs> Um, Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, we weren't adding those in. Okay. Because we only we asked to reduce to eight. So that I think that goes beyond twenty five percent reduction. So twenty five percent would be four if you go to twenty five. So we exceed. <coughs> we double the the minimal amount. So So we're if if you do the twenty five percent of fifteen, that's four spots. And we're and we're gonna have eight on premises. No, it's a twenty five percent reduction. It's not a reduction to twenty five percent. It's up to twenty five percent of the parking requirement on page uh, Six of the staff yeah, they, they can the reduce it by up to 25 percent. <coughs> they're they're two, thinking they will need 25 percent of the parking requirement. Yeah, they're up to. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where the One confusion is. Yeah. It's. I understand it. How Jenny is explaining it that the reduction can um, be up to 25 percent of what is required, which is 15. Which if right. 15 spaces are required, and so they need 11. Mm -hmm. No, it can. The reduction can go down to twenty-five percent of what is required. So that's four spaces. So they are allowed to reduce all the way down to four spaces as the bylaw is written. They're providing eight spaces. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm. But that was our. That's how we've done it in the past. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah. Oh. All right. So. Can we read more? Clearly, because I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to clarify that. Add that to our case. It's not your rewrites. And then, just if I may, Andrew, Go ahead. They, they noted in their in their letter regarding reduction that a letter of agreement would be provided okay. with regard to any. Okay. If they do okay. any well, that, shared that parking, was my they would at the future time. That was my primary concern. Ensure that there was a letter provided. Say again? The letter. The letter. The letter. So I'd like to. I, I think four parking spaces meets the, re the requirements of the zoning bylaw. I'd just like to see the letter for our records for the other agreements, just to double up on our understanding of what's being done there. Um, I think we also have some requests as far as the transportation management, demand management plan that we've done um, Before I get too far ahead, I'll see if David's done it. Rachel has any questions. Uh, sure, the only um, question I think that I have that hasn't been addressed is um, on the side of the, the building where you have the new ADA access and the ramp, do you have a handicap parking space on uh, that side for visitors? You don't. There might be something that, that you want to think it's, about. It's wide enough to accommodate. We could provide one. Um, state law doesn't require one with only eight spots. Mm -hmm. um, so. I mean, if you're, if you're. We have. Five foot aisle was yeah. next to that spot. And you have a visitor spot, correct? Right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I would just you know ask you to consider if your visitor spot um, you know, could be handicapped accessible, but that mm -hmm. might be something you want to take a look at. Since you're going through the effort of making this right. an accessible building, right. um, I do appreciate, I do, do want to just say that I appreciate all of the effort that you're going through um, to make this a much more sustainable 
um, sustainable building and the energy reduction that you're building into the space through your additional insulation and the windows that you've selected. Um, it's really commendable that you've gone as far as you, as you have. Um, the, the, the last question I just wanted to also ask, I think that you have this covered through lighting underneath your canopy, but if you've ensured that there's enough site lighting for the parking spaces or if there's any other additional um, freestanding site lighting for the parking that, that you need to, to add in. I mean, you had talked about uh, maybe doing like some levels of solar lights down mm -hmm. here because I'm a little concerned about this area. Yeah. Um, so Just at night. Yeah, yeah we, might, we might want to add something at the center of this lot. I mean, it's pretty uh, <coughs> abandoned down here. Right, right. Um, if you're making it a space that you're encouraging people to use, like, we just want to make sure that it's also properly mm -hmm. led. Mm -hmm. Is part of this permit permitting process getting an easement uh, from the MBTA? Uh, no, we are not going to do that anymore. Yeah. Um, so what is the question? Sorry. Getting an easement from the MBTA. I don't see how you can do that retaining wall or do any of the work in the back of the building about, uh, without that. <coughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I believe the contractors are depending on, I mean, they, they have a process for um, you know, doing work on, on their, with access to their property for a project like this. I don't think it's, an, I was confused to use an easement because it, in my mind, is like a longer term. No, no, it's, um, it's a construction yeah, easement. Yeah, 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 we'll definitely do that. Okay, so you have, so you have been in discussions well, with them? Well, we consider that part of the construction manager's responsibility and construction. Yeah, um, well, it could be. I've, I've done projects in the past before, but he said, okay, well, leave it up to the contractor, and then also the contract talks to him, they say no. We'll talk to him. It's a little bit outside of our purview. No, I'm just saying that, you know, yes, it's a that uh, yeah. is, is right on the lot line. I mean, retaining the wall, the, uh, any work on that back side of the building facing the uh, ETA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, what is code for um, a driveway? Isn't it 22 feet for a back, back and turn? Yeah. I mean, if, if you look at the back, if you look at this drawing here, I'm sorry, when, I, when you mentioned the handicap, I took another look at this. It's, it shows that it's 21 feet. 22 foot one right here at the, at the widest part, right? Mm -hmm. So you're fine there. But then it tapers down to, I don't know. Yeah, so it tapers. <laughs> uh, what is it back there? Is that, does that make the visitor and that uh, spare spot not compliant? Or do you have to rotate it a little bit the other way or something? I, you know, I, I just don't know. Um, because of the way the lot tapers, I mean, we just, like a foot or so, for example, the dimensions. But yeah, I mean, then it's not space then, right? I mean, you can't just say of the tapers, you can't just do that. So you have to figure out a way around that. Um, I'm not sure you solve it now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm trying to solve it. I don't know if there is a way around it. I mean, we could call it a, a compact space. Then, because these are 18 foot uh, spaces. So, probably a compact space piece of 22 feet. We'll have 22 feet? Yeah. I mean, we actually uh, take this off on the lot and park cars and like maneuver them around. So, it, it works. <laughs> but, yeah, you're right. I mean, it does taper um, to less than 22 feet there in the back. presentations I can't see you uh, raise your hand and I'll call on you please state your name and address for the record uh, be respectful please limit your comments to no more than three minutes and uh, go right ahead yes sir Guy Morello um, I live on uh, 11 York Road and uh, one of my comments would be the bus stop should be moved westbound on Summer Street uh, maybe a hundred feet or so 
but I can see the big track, the trail is over there having a little difficulty stopping traffic and then, uh, the track, the trail. yeah, the track, the trail is. But who's, who's, we don't have track, the trail. We don't oh, you, oh you, you're not going to have track, the trail is done? Box trucks. Box trucks, okay. I didn't know how big the operation was. What I was going to say was uh, once you leap, um, get rid of that uh, bus stop, uh, bigger trucks could pull up front and you could put a uh, handicap parking right there, a loading zone and a handicap. And I, th I think you have a great suggestion. If we could do anything to the MBA, MBTA, <laughs> we have a lot more to say than moving the bus stop. But yeah. uh, no, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no, that, 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 that was my comment to help alleviate some of the uh, well, confusion. You. Yeah, I, I didn't know, I thought that big orange thing was a uh, 10 wheel of trying to back into that spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so no. I appreciate it. Box truck, okay. All right, next. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is James Cutler. Uh, I live at 115 Summer Street. Um, looking forward to our new neighbors, um, uh, Food Lake, and so we're happy about the project. Uh, my question is actually, uh, the, 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 the things covered here today have covered most of my questions. The one remaining one I have is actually not for the Food Link program itself, but just a, a request or suggestion to consider a crosswalk uh, that would connect to those two bus stops. Because um, uh, it is a busy street, and uh, that, that does seem an appropriate place to, to have, and, you know, sure. help pedestrian traffic. I'll even request that. That's not us. But so, that's not bad to idea. follow up on all these MBTA comments, and then also this one, we are, we are looking at what to do about the bus stop, and then also just in general, the pedestrian activity in that area. So we will continue that conversation internally with the uh, city transportation planner and then also just talking with the town manager and the transportation advisory committee potentially. Um, and then we are actually interested in pursuing some sort of access in the rear of the building as a future phase of whatever could potentially happen here. That, uh, that turned into what would probably be a simpler request into a longer term conversation. And so we are, we are supportive of that as well. But all of these things combined are not evening. Uh, <clears throat> turn it back to the board. It sounds like we have some additional requests, uh, at least as far as design and transportation and management, uh, and some other items that I think the board wants to consider before we move to a vote. Uh, unless I'm incorrect on that, I think what I would do is continue this. Uh, September 9th is getting kind of full, but it makes sense to do it then. The ones we have that night, I think it'll take that long. We can come back that night to present any additional information or, or revisions that you might be able or willing to make? Um, yeah, I guess I, I'm not 100% clear on what, um, what, what exactly. We're looking at the entry area. We, we, we're, taking a, we're actually taking a look at the entry area. Mm -hmm. uh, the other area we asked you for is the traffic demand uh, management plan. We need to get a consultant for that because we thought we had no you that. just really need to flesh out what you discussed with us when I asked the question okay. in writing so that we have that as a as <coughs> evidence to justify parking reduction one of the things that we asked for um, I think I'd like to see that and um, I know we asked about a lighting plan is there a landscaping plan in there that we need to be concerned with is there landscaping that we be doing on the site that we should consider um, it should be shown on this plan, basically, we're, we're, uh, a small planting bed here for mm -hmm. screening, some planters here, and here. Okay. I, I wasn't yeah. sure what they were doing. That's doing. That's fine. Um, if you had some notes, just say what can present bush, is it a planter? Yeah. One wasn't fine. Okay. Yeah. Don't need to yeah. go ahead. Just, just a tiny bit more detail mm -hmm. as far as that goes. And um, then I reduced the uh, two park spaces to at least compacts for now. Mm -hmm. Give us a dimension there. Once they're compacts, do we get to 22? Mm -hmm. Does that put us away from a handicap spot? Is that the most spot? Again, it's not a requirement. Right. It's but more of a question. Mm -hmm. a request. request. If we can get one on there, that was a good request. Uh, we can't get that. Can't do it. Okay. Okay. It has to be a full spot for handicap. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Deferring to the experts on that one. Good. Other questions, comments, requests before we... Did you mention how how often 
do you have the box trucks backing into the loading dock? It's not going to be right. very often. Right now, it's twice a week to pick up banana boxes. Also, not not often at all. Was in, I think you'd have that in your chart. Yeah, and you they they're and there so there fast that, week. that you know they're there mm -hmm. so fast that um, you, you know parking uh, it was recommended by somebody who does this that you do it like once an hour. You, you do. So they could have been in and out in like eight minutes. And you miss it. And we wouldn't have even, yeah. like, we wouldn't even know all what, we will now, but we wouldn't always know. What, what time of day does that happen typically? Oh, like around 11 a.m.? Right. Yeah, around like 12, 12, 31 o'clock on a Thursday. Yeah. And I, then I, on I'm, just, I'm just thinking about um, whether they're, what the best way of doing that safely is going to be given the traffic on Summer Street since you have to back across two lanes and don't have We've actually done. watched the, the, the trucks, the box trucks that yeah. deliver to the liquor store. Uh -huh. And what they do is they come, I think they came from the east, made a U-turn in Summer Street and then pulled up at the liquor store. That's what they do. We're not, not we're not, we don't want our folks to do that. Yeah, this plan was to have it pull in straight and then back and then back. Out. You don't even pull out. And then pull out. Okay. There's two existing curb cuts here. Okay, so they're not back. They're not backing up the cross track. Yeah. Okay. Good. That 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 was my only concern. Yeah. No, we we did various scenarios. And thank, that's thank, you thank you for not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you look on Google Maps. So, is there anything else we want to see as a board? Looking back, you've done a good job. I think they've done a great job. Do you you just really like the project. Yeah. Want the project mm -hmm. here? If you just address a few of those issues, yeah, yeah. it would be great. So, great. So, right. does the 21 day then start from then or now? Then, when 21 day starts from when the decision. Lease ending on the uh, January 15th. Okay. Six month project. No, we don't. <laughs> January 15th is four months and we haven't started from now. Oh. It's a six month project. <laughs> moving, moving again. Jenny, do you have any points on that? Um, well, um, my guidance would be that the new entry is really challenging for them. Yeah. We spent a lot of time talking about the facade and the challenges that they have with the fact that the building, really, they have no depth there. They can't do anything. They can't add anything. Definitely they can't change a lot. Block. Obviously, the facade is basically the same with the exception of the band that they added yeah. and the canopy. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the extent to what they could do. Mm -hmm. So with the you know possibilities of paint, um, I'm not sure how else to advise this particular applicant and potentially taking that window and turning it into a door. So you'd basically have a double door. Um, but I don't know if they'd be amenable to that and that's actually not really the same size. And what if we just had the door match the other two doors? It looks like the other option, that's what I was going to say, is to turn it into another orange door. But I don't know that they necessarily want to want to have that look. But I, I mean, I, we staff could of course work with this applicant to Devise a better, more prominent. Um, is that an know, outswing door? Opening. No. Is it an inswing door? Yeah. yeah. You see that it gives it like a little. Good shop. You yeah. couldn't even make it a double door because the stair up is right. in front of that second window. So, like so here's 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 what I suggest, <coughs> and I'll defer to the other members of the board. But, uh, I think we can we can make it a condition that the applicant continue to work with staff on the entryway, transportation demand management plan, and parking spaces. Uh, those are the conditions in the special permit. Uh, yeah, so the, um, existing conditions. so the, the, the agreements, which was the other part of it, that they would need to provide they need if to they provide are those. doing any sort of shared parking arrangement, and then how they configure on the site plan the cars in that part of the lot. Mm -hmm. um, that would be subject to the approval of the, of the department. If we have any concerns about it, we would bring it back to the board. Okay. Um, similarly, the types of plants that are proposed in the landscaping plan and the exterior lighting, 
um, which we don't have to review yet, but we can review that as well. And again, with any of these items, if we if there's a flag or an issue, we can bring it back. We can bring it back, but that that would allow us to issue the permit. These yeah. would be special conditions. Those so special conditions. in addition Not to the general to conditions. Further. Special conditions that was mentioned. I'm not going to repeat that, okay? That's fine. We have it on camera. <laughs> uh, I hope. Say it all right. Okay. Well, but you know what that is, right? Thank you. Can you say the permit, the uh, you do special Yeah, so what we would do is move to approve the ER special permit number 3604. 3604. Uh, with the general conditions as recommended by the staff and special conditions as uh, outlined by the director. <coughs> so, so motion moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Congratulations. Thank now you. the 21 days starts. Okay. Thank, Thank you for bringing that up. Nothing to hurt you. We just went out there. At this time, I will allow it <laughs> going. Oh, I, I just had a quick, uh, I have no <clears throat> no presentation, but I was just wondering about the format. Was that a PowerPoint format and who controls it? That um, that was a PDF. A PDF file. A okay. PDF file shown full screen and um, with the clicker and the USB device. Um, this is my work computer, so okay. I loaded their presentation on this, and Carl could control the movement of the presentation. Oh, I see. With okay. The so um, as long as it's in PDF format, not PowerPoint, or it can be PowerPoint as well. It can be PowerPoint or PDF, and use um, use the clicker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Seeing none, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.